Target operates over 1,800 locations in the U.S. It maintains a demographic profile for every customer so that it tracks anything they purchased in Target. When it came to data collection, Target was at a whole different magnitude. Millions of shoppers stepped into Target's shops each year and passed on terabytes of information about themselves. Most had no idea that they did. They used their consumer loyalty cards, gave their mobile numbers, redeemed coupons they got in the mail, or used a credit card, unaware that Target will then connect their transactions to an individual demographic profile. This data was a magic gateway to a statistician for peering into the tastes of customers. Target sold everything from groceries to clothes, appliances and lawn furniture, and by closely watching the shopping patterns of customers, researchers at the company were able to predict what was happening inside their homes. Someone buys new towels, dishes, silverware, pans and frozen dinners? They just bought a new home or having a divorce. A cart filled with bug spray, clothing for kids, a lantern, lots of batteries, and a Chardonnay bottle? Target knows that there's a summer camp around the corner. Nevertheless, as the retail marketplace has become more competitive over the years, Target has started to realize that they had to do something special. The best way to maximize sales was to find out the habits of each individual shopper and sell them customized ads tailored to cater to the particular purchasing needs of customers. This realization came in part from a growing understanding of how strongly patterns affect virtually every shopping decision. A series of tests persuaded marketers that if they could grasp the preferences of a single shopper, they could get them to buy just about everything. Researchers wanted to learn how people were making buying decisions. In particular, they were searching for shoppers who had come along with shopping lists who, potentially, had determined in advance what they wanted. What they found was that despite such lists, more than 50% of buying decisions took place at the moment a customer saw a product on the shelf because their actions were stronger than their written intentions and each person had his own buying habits. Target wanted to take advantage of those individual quirks. But as millions of people walk through your doors every day, how do you keep track of their shopping habits and preferences? You gather data. Enormous quantities of data, almost inconceivably huge. Beginning just over a decade ago, Target began building a massive data warehouse that allocated each shopper an identification code, internally known as the guest ID number, which kept track of how each person shopped. If a customer used a Target-issued credit card, presented a frequent buyer sticker to the counter, redeemed a voucher that was shipped to their home, filled out a survey, sent in a refund, phoned the customer's helpline, opened an email from Target, visited Target.com, or purchased something online, the company's machines took notice. A record of each transaction was connected with the guest ID number of that shopper, along with details about everything else they'd ever purchased. Also linked to that guest ID number were demographic details such as the nationality of the shopper, their work history, the year they purchased their home, what magazines they read, whether they have ever declared bankruptcy, where they went to college or graduate school, and whether they like other types of coffee, toilet paper, cereals or applesauce. If you buy a box of popsicles once a week using your Target credit card, usually about 6.30 p.m. on a weekday, and mega-sized trash bags every July and October, Target statisticians and computer programs can determine whether you have kids at home. It will look at your other shopping habits and find that if you often buy cereal, but never buy milk, which means you are buying it somewhere else. So Target will give you coupons for milk. The company has the opportunity to tailor the advertisements and coupons it delivers to each customer, but you would probably never know that you have received a different flyer in the mail than your neighbors. If you buy Bicanus in April, Target sends you coupons for sunscreen in July and weight loss books in December. But Target understood that it doesn't take a genius to know that someone buying cereal probably also needs milk, so there were other, much harder and more profitable questions to be answered. Target isn't alone in its desire to predict consumers' habits. Almost every major retailer, including Amazon.com, Best Buy, Kroger Supermarkets, 1-800-Flowers, Olive Garden, Anheuser-Busch, the U.S. Postal Service, Fidelity Investments, Hewlett-Packard, Bank of America, Capital One, and hundreds of others, have predictive analytics departments devoted to figuring out consumers' preferences. Alan Anderson, a UCLA professor, conducted a series of experiments to find out why some customers change their buying habits. Anderson and his team carried out telephonic surveys with the consumers of Los Angeles. Analyzing the results of their surveys brought them to a conclusion that people change their buying habits when they go through some major life event. 
having a baby, getting married, moving into a new house, getting divorced, getting a new job and having someone enter or leave the house are the major life changes that altered people's buying habits, with having a baby being the biggest life-changing event. To most consumers there is basically no greater disruption than a child's arrival. As a result, at the moment the behaviors of new parents are more versatile than at almost every other time in the life of an adult. Therefore pregnant women become gold mines for businesses. New parents buy lots of stuff diapers and wipes, cribs, blankets and bottles that stores like Target sell at a significant profit. One 2010 survey found that the average parent spends $6,800 on baby products before the child's first birthday. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Such initial costs are negligible compared to the gains that a store will make by taking advantage of the changing shopping patterns of a new parent. If tired moms and sleep-deprived dads start buying baby formula and diapers at Target, they will also start buying their food, cleaning supplies, towels, socks, and well, the sky's the limit. If you're running around the shop, searching for bottles and finding orange juice, you're surely going to grab a carton. As you find everything in one place, you keep going back because easy matters the most for a new parent. New parents are so valuable to major retailers that they will do almost anything to find them. Target needed to find out who is pregnant based on their buying habits. So they needed someone with deep data analytic skills. Andrew Pohl is a statistician. The whole of his life has been about using data to understand people. He earned a degree in statistics after college and then another in economics. He would become fascinated with the manner in which economists use pattern analysis to describe human behavior. In reality, Pohl had himself tried his hand at a few informal experiments. Once, he threw a party and questioned everyone about their favorite jokes, then tried to construct a mathematical model for the perfect one-liner. He had tried to measure the exact quantity of beer that he had to drink to build up the courage to speak to women at parties, but not so much that he would make himself fool. Paul noticed that Target is looking for number crunchers and joined the statistics department of Target in 2002. As soon as he joined, he was given the task of finding out who is pregnant based on the customer's buying habits. The goal of Target was to begin marketing to parents before the baby arrived. Paul began to work on the issue by scouring the details in Target's baby shower registry, which let him observe how the shopping patterns of the average woman changed as her due date approached. The registry has been like a lab where he could check hunches. Every expectant mother handed over her name, the name of her husband, and the date she was due. The data warehouse of Target could connect the information to the guest IDs of the family. As a result, if one of these women bought something in a store or online, Pohl can map the trimester in which the transaction occurred, using the due date the woman gave. He was able to pick up patterns from the data. Expectant mothers, he found, were shopping in predictable ways. Take lotions for example. Lots of people purchase lotion, but at the beginning of their second trimester, a target data analyst found that women on the baby registry were purchasing relatively large amounts of unscented lotion. Another researcher observed that many pregnant women loaded up on supplements, such as calcium, magnesium, and zinc, even in the first 20 weeks. Most shoppers purchase soap and cotton balls every month, but when someone suddenly starts purchasing tons of scent-free soap and cotton balls, as well as hand sanitizers and an extraordinary amount of washcloths, all at once, a few months after buying lotions and magnesium and zinc, they're getting close to their delivery date. As Paul's computer program crawled through the data, he was able to recognize about 25 different items that helped him to peer into a woman's womb when examined together. Most important, when she was on the verge of making new purchases, he could guess what trimester she was in and predict her due date, so Target could give her coupons. By the time Paul was finished, his software had been able to allocate a pregnancy predictor score to almost every daily shopper. Jenny Ward, a 23-year-old who purchased a lotion of cocoa butter, a purse big enough to double as a diaper bag, zinc, magnesium, and a bright blue rug? There's an 87% chance she's pregnant, and her delivery date is in late August. Liz Alter in Brooklyn, a 35-year-old who bought five packs of washcloths, a bottle of laundry detergent for sensitive skin, baggy jeans, dock containing vitamins and a slew of moisturizers? She has a 96% chance of pregnancy and is expected to give birth early in May. Caitlin Pike, a 39-year-old in San Francisco who bought a stroller for $250 but nothing else? She is probably buying it for a friend's baby shower. In fact, the demographic data indicates that she was divorced two years earlier. Paul applied his program to every Target shopper in the database. When it was finished, he had a list of hundreds of thousands of women who were likely to be pregnant. 
At times when their shopping patterns were especially flexible, Target could overwhelm them with advertising for diapers, lotions, cribs, wipes, and maternity clothes. If a fraction of those women or their husbands started doing their shopping at Target, the company's bottom line would add millions. Then, just as this tsunami of ads was about to begin, somebody inside the marketing department asked a question. How do women respond when they find out how much Target knows? If we give a catalog to someone and say, congratulations on your first child, and they've never told us they're pregnant, that's going to make some people nervous, Paul felt. We're very strict in complying with all data privacy laws. But even though you follow the rule, there are things you might do that make people feel queasy. Approximately a year after Paul developed his prediction model for pregnancy, a man walked into a Minnesota Target and demanded to see the manager. He clutched out an advertisement. He was really furious. My daughter received this in the mail. He said. She is only in high school and you give her baby clothes and crib coupons? Want to persuade her to get pregnant? The boss had no idea what the guy was talking about. He stared at the mailer. It was, of course, addressed to the daughter of the man and included ads for maternity clothes, nursery furniture, and images of smiling children looking into the eyes of their mothers. The manager apologized profusely. After a few days, the man returned. I had a talk with my daughter, he said. It turns out there were some things in my house that I wasn't fully aware of. He took a deep breath. She's due in August. I owe you an apology. Pohl and his colleagues knew that using data to forecast a woman's pregnancy was a possible public relations disaster. So how do they get their advertisements into the hands of expectant mothers without making it seem they spied on them? How do you benefit from the behaviors of others without letting them know that you are researching every aspect of their lives? How does Target convince pregnant women to use diaper coupons without creeping them out? By dressing something new in old clothes and making the unfamiliar seem familiar. They started mixing items they knew pregnant women would never buy in all these ads, so the baby ads looked random. Next to diapers they should insert an ad for a lawnmower. Next to baby clothes they can place a coupon for the wine glasses. So, it looked like all the items had been selected by chance. And they discovered that as long as a pregnant woman feels she's not spied on, she'll use the coupons. She's only saying everybody else on her block has the same mailer for diapers and cribs. It works, as long as they have not creeped her out. Target began sandwiching the diaper coupons between non-pregnancy items, which made the ads seem anonymous, familiar, and comfortable. They camouflaged all they learned. Eventually, sales of Target's mom and baby broke out. Target's sales went up from $44 billion to $65 billion between 2002 and 2009. In 2005, the company's chairman, Greg Steinhaffel, spoke about the focus of the company on products and categories that cater to different groups of guests, such as mom and baby. The Target Baby Direct Mail program drove significant rises in trips and sales in 2004. Whether selling a new song, a new food, or a new crib, the lesson is the same. It's easier for the public.